Welcome to River City Plus. It is the show after the show, and our Monday motivation is going to be following us all the way through. We had it on River City Live earlier with some segments that were definitely uplifting and uh, informative. And now I'm here with Sherry Jones and Amy Copeland, and we're talking about Sherry's book, Finding Sherry, as April is National Childhood Sexual Abuse Awareness Month. And... Um, Obviously, this is uh, something that resonates with a lot of people, but you wrote a book about it. Yes, I did. So, uh, yeah. so let's get. So I got into it a little bit, and what I found out early is you were adopted at a young age, yes. and then life happened. Life happened. So tell people about it a little bit. You don't have to give it because you wanted to get the book, but yes. just give them an overview. Well, when I was fourteen years old, I was um, raped by my cousin that was 28 years old um, and then the next month by the minister in the church where we were going in Spokane Washington and um, I never told anybody until I was 28 years old when I was watching um, Oprah when I walked to my mom's house and she was watching Oprah and I just started crying and she asked me what was wrong and I told her that happened to me and then at that you know she said why you didn't say anything and I said because I was too afraid and that's the deal is most people, or I shouldn't put it in just a broad stroke, but a lot of times the conversation is people are afraid and don't know what the reaction is going to be from family or community because a lot of times the victim mm -hmm. is shamed for this yes, situation. So you kept that inside for 14 years. Yes. And uh, did that affect you in different ways that you didn't realize until you finally opened up about it? Yes, it affected um, trust issues, my self-esteem, um, just me in general. And then, you know, I started smoking at the age of 14 and drinking at the age of 14. So a lot played into that happening to me. So a lot of acting out at a young age. Yes. And when that happened, your family didn't react any way? They were just thought you were being rebellious? Actually, I don't think I was rebellious. I think well, I, just I know you in, weren't. I just, think, <laughs> yeah. I just think I was in a shell. Yeah, yeah. You know. Um, but your family, like. They if didn't you, really recognize it. But they didn't even see you smoking and drinking and no. didn't? Oh, so no. you hit it, hit it well. Okay. I hit it very oh, well. Oh, well. Is that, oh. Yes. So oh, that's a lot to carry I at such a yes. And then in that time, it was definitely not anywhere where you felt free, uh, had a safe space. Right. And then another thing is, it wasn't rape wasn't talked about back in the seventies, back in the day. So me not even knowing what words to put with what had happened to me was also traumatizing. And the fact that a lot of times, it's somebody you know. Yes. And that definitely adds an ex added stigma. And then yes. keeping it buried and when you brought it out where people are like, nah, that didn't really happen. Yes. Yes. And that's true because, you know, um, my cousin was someone who came over to the house all the time. And so when he came to the house and brought me my Lifesaver candy box that I had asked for the year before, then I didn't realize that I was selling my soul to the devil, you might say, mm -hmm. over a dollar Lifesaver candy box. Mm. Just get the book. Get the book. All right. So uh, with yes. that, we have uh, editor uh, Amy here, and you played an integral role in shaping the book because uh, in the book you have the story, you have Sherry's story, but at the end of each chapter there's some little um, notes, some information, added information, and that kind of came about from you. Yes, um, a relationship started out that I was her editor, and so she came to me, and I coached her, and we pulled the story out of her, mm -hmm. but as it began to take shape, we realized we wanted to add a little bit of an educational component to the story, and the way we decided to do that is at the end of each chapter, I would do a little bit of research on one of the topics that had surfaced in the chapter and provide some information. Um, for example, just like uh, what you were saying about sexual assault not being talked about with children and the perpetrators are often known to the child, 90% of the perpetrators are known to the child. Stranger danger is maybe 10% of the time. 
but most of the time it's someone that the family knows and trusts. So how do you, after you were able to open up about it, is the book, was that like your therapeutic and kind of cathartic moment where you were finally able to address it? Not let it go, but right. you could let go of some of it and really embrace. Right, so when I started writing, after I uh, told my mother, I would always tear it up because I was still embarrassed. And so it wasn't until um, last year that I was actually able to keep writing and get it on paper. And yes, it is very therapeutic and I tell people to write. You know, whether, you know, whatever it is, just write, write until you get uh, past that hurdle. And one young lady I just spoke with, she said once she gets to a certain point where things escalated in her abuse, she stops. And I said, that's where you keep writing, and then you stop, and then you go cry it out, because that's your healing. That's your breakthrough yes. moment. Yes. So what do you hope people take away from reading your book? From reading my book, I hope that they will ex will learn will share, share their story, get it out of your get it out of your soul because that's what I did. I'm free. Um, I even went as far as going to my cousin's house and knocking on his door, telling him I forgive him for what he did to me. He didn't do anything but put his head down, but I asked him to forgive me. I said, if God can forgive me for things I've done, then He can forgive you as well. Why so, did you ask him for forgiveness? because I forgive, forgave him for what he did to me because it was in my spirit, it was in my soul, and I have to forgive. You have to forgive people for things that they do. Right, but uh, did you say you asked him to forgive you? Yes. Like, I can understand you forgiving him, but... Well, yeah, I, yeah, I forgave him for what he did. My, okay, my okay, father. I just, I was like, I'm yes. not, no. No. So, uh, but he... I act, forgave him for what he did. Okay. I'm sorry. No, yes. but, so, but the only acknowledgement, but there was an acknowledgement he even... He put if, his head down. So he, yes. he realizes... Yes. Ah. This was like three years ago that I did that. Wow. Now, does the rest of the family kind of know what happened? Well, I oh, guess they know knows. now. Yeah, everybody knows. <laughs> yes, yes. And the interesting thing with that is is that, well, I better not say that part. No. Okay, we'll keep that. We'll keep that close. But for you, Amy, to be a part of this, what's it mean for you to be able to help share her story and get that information out there and maybe people can learn to let go and release? Was there anything in your life where you're like, and it doesn't necessarily have to be that same spectrum, but it teaches you about forgiveness? Absolutely. Um, I think that we've all been through certain experiences for whatever they were that were traumatizing, and forgiveness is a big part of a healing process. Um, for me, working with Sherry, it was an honor and a privilege um, that she trusted me with her story. And actually, I work as a writing tutor at FSCJ. That's my day job. And I deal with this all day, every day in my daily life because students in their freshman English are writing about their personal stories. And they so many times have something heavy they need to get unburdened of. And so that's what I do, is I work with people and help them tell their stories. Was it hard for you to get her to, to draw the story out? Like, how did you guys connect? Wow. Um, well, Sherry will tell you, I gave her homework. <laughs> 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 because she would bring me something, and I would look at it, and i go, okay, well, this is part of your story, but what about this? What about that? Mm -hmm. Next time, bring me something about what mm -hmm. led to this experience. Mm -hmm. Next time, bring me something about what you did after that happened. Yeah. And so we just kept working with it and working with it until Sherry felt like the story was complete. Uh, how did you find her? I found her through... Um, I found her through um, Craig Seaton. He works with Brodus Rain's uh, funeral home, and I went to one of his seminars. And he's, I was, we were sharing back and forth, and I was telling him I was going to be writing the story. And then he said, "Well, I know somebody who will help you." And her name is Lynn Scapiac. Scapiac. And then when I called her, she referred me to Amy Copeland. 
So, Kismet, so you were writing your story, kind of journal, and then you're like, well, I think I want to share it. And synchronicity brought it all together. That's right, yes. And it was amazing <laughs> how that all came to be. <laughs> So, uh, do we have any plans to like speak on it in a bigger spectrum, or books, or just public talks? Anything. We just uh, sitting out there. We just have got two engagements from out there, but we've been to the colleges here already, and uh, so yeah, just Southern Women Show, hopefully, and yeah, just everywhere. And so, if you have someone in your family who's suffered some st type of it sexual abuse as especially as a child you know and uh maybe uh they're not willing to share or uh whatever the case may be maybe get them this book and allow them to see that there is a safe space where you can release some of that and because holding that onto that will just eat you alive so kudos to you for letting that go now we've got the url on the screen this is where you can buy the book uh this is one spot is there a, are there other places just that one's good for okay. you. yes um probably within the next week or so we'll have a couple of copies available at chamblin's both outlets as well as literary lounge and um, from there, we'll be working on getting onto the Ingram Spark platform. Awesome. Well, like I say, people, support your locals. If people want to keep up with you online, find out about more books, or maybe find out some insight, or maybe just have a conversation that you might help them with, where can they find you? Right. Sherry Jones on Facebook. And um, then they can um, email me at jonesherry6559 at gmail.com. Awesome. Well, again, kudos for you for sharing your story. Kudos to you for helping her share that story and giving those a uh, little uh, technical information uh, that will definitely help people in the long run. So uh, uh, thanks for hanging out with us today and sharing your story. And like I say, people, support your locals, support your family. It doesn't matter what situation. It's all about love these days. So. We'll have uh, more River City Plus tomorrow, and then tomorrow at 9.30, more River City Live. Take it easy.